Okay, well, uh, I'm no Barry Humphreys. I don't wear a wig, I don't wear a dress, and I'm certainly not funny. But, I also don't back down from a fight easily. So, if there's one fight I am going to win, it's going to be against a piece of wood, like this, using cutting tools, like this. These are my old saws, my new chisels, which I bought today, and my new coping saw, which I bought today. Let's see if it can cope with the job. And we're going to test and try my new tools on this. The same pine board we saw yesterday, because I haven't been able to get any wood. And we're going to make a fork cue. Or we're going to try to, anyway. And hopefully, this will make up the difference. So, I'll get back to you soon. Okay, so uh, this is the first cut. You can see the finger grooves still in there. And we're going to try and remove the fork wood now, which is where the trouble was last time. We're going to go on roughly the same principle, but now we've got different tools. So it should work out a bit better. If this doesn't work, I guess I'll make a boring cubing video or something like that, something that nobody in their right mind would watch. But uh, anyway, let's give it a go and see if we can use this wood. So far, so good. Okay, there's the first prong out, using the chisel and the hammer. Uh, unfortunately, it seems like the the gibbon who actually made those chisels decided not to sharpen them before they sold them. But, you know, maybe it's my fault for being poor and having to buy cheap materials. But, uh, nonetheless, we've had this before, so we'll just take it from here using the coping saw now. If I can find it. It's just here. Look at that. We've removed all the prongs, and we have no splitting. And now, I think I'm actually going to use the coping saw to remove these uh, finger grooves here and then after that we can put down the saws look look it worked very well that coping saw was lovely and in fact I'm gonna tidy up a bit of the uh, forks with it and then well, we may not even need the rasp I was thinking we need the rasp today but we may not even need it we might go straight onto files but uh, nonetheless I'll keep you Workspace, nice and tidy. Tidy and nice. That's the way we leave your heights. And I'll get back to you in a minute. When we've had a bit of tidying up and I decide what to do. Well, folks, this is working out lovely. Lovely, jubbly, as they say. And this coping saw is working beautifully. Absolutely great. I'm extremely happy with it. It's just like a jigsaw or something, but it's handheld. And that's just fine. I don't mind putting the work in. So, this is looking like it's just about ready for a good filing. In which case, I'll run the file over it and file in some band grooves. And I think that'll be done. It's a beautiful soft wood to work with. Usually all my woodwork is done in the bush, in, out in the woods. And it means that I very rarely get the opportunity to work with very... Um, well, I work with soft woods, but I don't get to work with shaped wood. You know, it's all uh, it has to be shaped by me every single step of the way from the very beginning, usually. And so this is great. This is a very enjoyable experience, actually, drawing it out, marking it out, and doing all the cuts and whatnot myself. As you can see, we have a, do have a small fracture here, so I'll be concerned about the strength in the forks. Whoops, nearly got a saw in the face. So I'll be concerned about the strength of the forks, but I think it's going to be okay. And any worries I may have, I may just trim the top off the forks and then that will give it a slightly lower 
fork and more strength to it because there'll be less tension on the uh, base of the forks there where the fork meets the so-called handle. Okay, I'll do the filing then and I'll get back to you. Okay, these are the files I'll be using. Well, this is a rasp, the yellow handles are the files. These are the, this is the rasp I was talking about. It's actually quite a good one. It's got a good uh, solid handle and I spent about a tenner on it, so that's, uh, that's more than enough to win. But um, these are awful, but the steel is relatively strong, so the handle is the only bad thing about it. The actual files themselves are relatively good, actually. I was pleasantly surprised. But you can see this has a curve to it. I don't know if there's a specific name. There's bound to be a special name for that, and I don't know. So if somebody knows, tell me. But um, this one is a flat edge. And we're going to be using these two to do the shaping and smoothing. And we're going to be doing this one to make the band markers. And I, we don't need the rasp today because that coping saw worked out so well. So, let's go. Okay, catapult users, here we have it. The file has done wonders. You can see there I've um, tapered the ends, which was an inspiration by Charles. And all I did was just got the rounded, uh, wherever it is, the rounded file, and just simply filed away a bit just in there. And the um, round file served for the band slots, no problem. So, I think we have it. I'm just going to uh, give it a quick sanding, I think, with some fine sandpaper. And then we can band it up and shoot it, which I'm looking forward to. Okay. Okay, peoples. Let's sand it up beautifully. So, I'll just get some bands on it. Well, here you have it. Um, it's only just got dark. We're just getting dark outside. So the whole thing has taken me about 45 minutes. It would have been quicker if I hadn't been uh, talking on the video. So obviously, I don't know, I reckon about half an hour it took. But this is a nice soft wood, so. Anyway, let's do a quick comparison. Same width. A little bit extra on the bottom for extra support. The fork is actually slightly wider, as you can see. The actual fork itself. This I measured, I think it was three. I think it was three centimeters, but it was either two and a half and three, or two and two and a half. Either way, point is it's a bit smaller, just a little. This is normal shooting size for me. Here's my single TheraBand strips. It's quite a large pouch today, but. Uh, Nonetheless, we're going to have some fun now and set up some shooting. Okay, these are the steel balls we'll be using, 9.4. And uh, I'll be shooting from there, where the boomerangs are, up on the wall, over to there. See the disc? Like Paresh. And that's about 15 feet. And you're just going to have to take my word for it. But I'm on target, that I'm on uh, at distance, because we're going to be using the fork you, but I can't prove it to you because there's just no way I can physically get this, them both in the same shot, I'm afraid. So you're just going to have to believe me. But hopefully it won't prove a problem. Oh, I miss.
Anyway, you get the point. So, that's him, Fork U, with the 9.5mm. And if you think this is too easy, let's give ourselves a bit more of a challenge, shall we? This is uh, a different setup now which I'll show you at some point, my cat sheet, again with Paresh's spinning disc. The boomerangs are way back there. And this is about an extra 10-12 feet. I think it works out about 25 feet. I measured it once, but today I want to go and have a bath. So uh, remember, every catapult is unique, and especially the naturals can have a lot of variation. The shots are going to be hard because I've never shot with this particular design before but everything goes to plan after a little bit of practice I just put in shouldn't be too bad hopefully we can get 3 out of 5 Okay, well, uh, <clears throat> for the first time shooting, I think that's not too bad. With a little bit of practice, I'll get the, uh, the target line just right, so I'll be able to get that every time. At the moment, whoops, let me just show you this. The target line was just about there, which I'm not used to. Usually I'm shooting just about there to get it dead on. But it wasn't, it was just about there. So I was uh, low or wide a couple of times because of such things. But um, 
yeah, nonetheless, it's a great shooter. Okay, uh, one more special treat for you. See the hook? We have here a Guinness cap. Pure Guinness. And I was just going to throw it away when I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to have some fun and do a little demonstration as well. Because there's been uh, some doubters out there about some of the lighter ammo and lighter bands. And uh, yeah, as much as we have people on our side, I thought here's a little one for the team. Whoops. Now, this one has no holes. This is uh, a previous one that has been perforated. Look, that arrow went all the way through there. See the light through it? And uh, we're just going to have some fun now because I'm going to be shooting. Dun -da 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 -da. Should have got these out first. 6mm ammo. These are 6mm. And boy, do I like 6mm. So, I'll just get rid of these 9 mils in my pocket. There you go, in your little pouch there. They're not the only ones I've got. Look. See them? Woo, what a load of 9.5 mils. Wow. No, we're just going to have uh, some 6 mils here. Should have thought of this first. 6 mil. A couple of 9 mils for comparison. So, uh, let's have some fun, shall we? Okay, same setup as the uh, short distance, 15 meter, uh, 15 feet, and this time with le 6 mil, still with the, uh, with the 4Q. Okay, that one's actually in the can, so let's see if we can get a full penetration, shall we? I promise you I'm at full distance here. I think that one went right through. That one almost certainly did. Oops. I'm not going to kill anything shooting like that, am I? <laughs> oh dear. One more. Let me check out the can. Now, so you know I'm not playing around. I'll just zoom out a bit. So you know I'm not playing around here. Let's have a look at this. Where's the mega power? Yeah. Way we have two full penetration there. You see that all the way through, and this is dangling, of course. So it's always a bit trickier when it's dangling. But uh, yeah, I think there's a little friend in there inside with the widget. Where's my holes? Okay. Ah, there it is. Did you see it there? A little flash of light. Where is he? I don't know. Okay, it doesn't matter. Anyway, you get the point. There you go, you can see there it's all the way uh, penetrated all the way through quite easily, no problems really. It's forced right out. So, yeah. I think that's a pretty successful experiment. Yeah. Please feel free to copy, guys. I'm going to be sending a couple out to. Um, is gifts for review, I think, and uh, I'm really interested in seeing what everyone has to say about it. But uh, yeah, if you like it, let me know. If you don't, you know, okay. But you know, aside from that, well, thank you very much for watching. It's been a been a video. Oh, look, I've got to do tidying up before I go and have my bath. Never mind.